Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is arranging the array and it is a medium level problem. So if by the end of this video, you feel that this video was helpful for you, then definitely consider dropping a like and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So for this particular problem, I would say that it is also a very standard problem and I don't know why the accuracy is so low, only around 37% but uh, you will see problems of these types very frequently in like interview type questions. So they say that uh, you have been given an array of size n and we have to rearrange the given array in such that the, all the negative numbers occur before all non-negative numbers. So non-negative numbers means 0 is also included and uh, I think they have misspelled it of here in a g a. Anyways, that's not our concern. So all the negative numbers should occur before all the non-negative numbers and maintain the order of all the negative and non-negative numbers as given in the original array. So basically they are saying that uh, here if you see 3 that is a non-negative number is present before minus 2. So it should come after minus 2 but the overall order of all negative numbers like minus 3 was before and minus 2 was after it they should maintain the same and 3 was before 2 so it should be maintained the same as well right so this is our only condition so like uh, this uh, our expected time complexity is n log n and we are going to see how we can solve this and at the end after the discussion i will also show you some variations of uh, similar problems which you can encounter and you can solve with a similar method so we have essentially been given an array right so a b c D. They are asking us to arrange the elements in some specific orders. Now you have to ask yourself, can it be related to sorting? Yes, because what essentially is sorting? Sorting is nothing, just comparing two elements. Comparing two elements, you have some comparison operator in between, right? And arranging them depending upon what your uh, comparison operator says. So if you, if you want smaller elements first, so you will put A first only if this is true. Otherwise, you will put B first if this is true, right? You have some comparison operator in between. So, in this particular question, our comparison operator was not so trivial, right? Our question was to place all negative numbers, negative numbers before all non-negative numbers, right? So, what you can do, if you have two numbers, you will have four choices, right? Either both of them are positive. Either the first one is positive and second one is negative. Either both of them are negative or the first one is negative and the second one is positive. So in this case, you will see in the first case that we have, we have to preserve the order of elements. So if this is A, this is B, right? So A and B will occur in the same order, right? In this particular case, you see that all the negative numbers should come before all the non-negative numbers. So in this case, the order will get switched, B, A. If both of them are negative, then the order should be preserved and that is why AB, it will remain untouched. And if the negative comes before positive, this is the required condition only. So we don't need to change it and that is why the order will again get preserved. So you see, the only condition, the only condition where we are swapping the elements is the second one where the first element is positive and the second element is negative, right? This is the only condition. So we know what is the criteria for our sorting mechanism. Now the next thing is to how do we sort our uh, array. So you can use any effective technique such as merge sort. Merge sort will be very effective in these kind of situations. So I believe that you already know how to do merge sort. If you know, then you can skip a little part of this video because I'm going to explain a little in detail for those who don't know merge sort, what is actually merge sort, right? So if you still want to watch, you can watch this particular part. I'm just going to explain merge sort. So merge sort is basically, you have an array, you have an array, you divide it into two parts, right? Then you have smaller arrays. So basically, it's a divide and conquer mechanism. Now you again divide it into two parts. Now you again have smaller arrays. So let's say you have two elements at this particular level. And again, smaller parts, two elements, here also two elements. Now you see that if you, if you divide this particular array further, you will only have one element at each stage, right? 
so what is the answer of only one element if you want to sort one element using any like using any criteria no matter what your criteria is if there is only one element a then your answer will always be a right if there is only one element no matter how you sort it the answer will be the element itself now you know the answer at this particular level what is your answer right you already know the answer at this particular level bottom level so let's say if this is a and this is b you want to find the answer of this particular level you will merge them this is why this is called merge sort merge is is just a fancy term here you are going to merge them and that means you are going to apply some comparison between these two operators and sort them accordingly and put them here we have already discussed what is that criteria this is the criteria we have already discussed that only in one case when only in one case when the positive comes before and the negative comes after we will swap the both of the elements in all other cases a and b will remain as it is and preserve their order so we will apply the same mechanism here and we will merge them into this particular level right so for all these levels for all these levels we will have our answer right now the next stage is to merge these two into a bigger answer now the problem generally in this particular case is how do we uh, since we already knew how to merge single elements we merge them but how do we merge these bigger elements right this is the next question so what you can do is let's say this is your uh, two arrays you will also maintain a bigger array of size 4 size 4 means basically the summation of both of these sizes right you have a pointer l here or let's say i you have a pointer j here and you have a pointer k here right so what you are essentially do is you will compare this element with this particular element right let's say you used this particular element first and let's say this is p right you use this particular element since you have used it your i will move one place forward right now you have to compare this particular element and this particular element right let's say you use the element present here so let's say it is q your j pointer will move forward j now let's say you use this particular element your i pointer will move forward so it will be r right so basically you will have two pointers i and j and instead of worrying about comparing the whole array you just have to compare the elements at that particular positions i and j right if you are able to figure out if you used the element at position i you will have to increment i if you used the element at position j you will have to increment j as simple as that now the next question that you might encounter is what happens if you use all the elements of one array and none of the others so for example if you had j like this you used j j moved here you again used j j moved here right so what what happens in this particular case when j is already used and i is remaining right and it can be the opposite also i is already used and j is remaining so all the remaining elements all the remaining elements will be pushed as it is so if there are two spaces empty and none of uh, none of the elements from i were used you will like insert the first element here and the next element here right so in case any of the elements are remaining you can just directly push back you don't have to do any comparison for them so this is the whole approach that of merge sort and i explained you merge sort in a very simple manner once you look at the code it will be very clear it's just a simple recursion and i believe that's it for this particular problem and there is one more important thing that i wanted to mention what are the all other types of question that can be solved with this particular method so generally you will have uh, some kind of questions like count number of inversions this is this is the first type right this can be one question and uh, there are also some questions like count number of swaps number of swaps so basically all of, in all of these questions what you have to do is you know when you are like uh, changing the position of the elements in in this particular question out of uh, four cases in three of them you didn't change anything right if a comes before you were writing a before and if b was before you would have written b before right but there was only one case when you were changing the order of the elements right so this is important you can count this uh, like swap as one operation and similarly you can count the number of total number of inversions or total number of swaps right these are some other kind of questions that can be solved using merge sort only so that's it let me show you the code now so in what i have done is this is my merge function and uh, this is my divide function so let us discuss what is in, in these two functions i am initially calling the divide function 
with index 0 and index n minus 1. So, this is the first position and this is the last position, right. Now, I come to the divide at, uh, function and I see when l is less than r, only when n is less than r, that means there are at least two distinct elements in my array, right. When l becomes equal to r, that means there is only one element, right. So, I do not need that. I need that at least l should be less than r. If it is true, then I calculate the mid value and I call the divide function from l to mid and from mid plus 1 to r, right. So, l to mid will be one section and mid plus 1 to r will be the other section. Now, after all of this has been completed, when, when it comes to merging, I call the merge function. So, my l will be my initial starting position and I pass my mid and I push my like the last index. So, I pass these three values to the uh, like merge function. And if you see, if you see the recursion, you will observe that that this the execution will be something like this. So, this is this was the original array. This was initially L, this will be calculated as mid and this will be calculated as R. So, first of all, the first uh, call that I am making is divide divide L to mid. So, it will get divided, it will the recursion call will reach this particular part. Again, L, mid and R will be calculated. Again, it will be divided, it will reach this particular part. Again, L, mid and R will be calculated, it will again get divided and it will reach this part, right. So, it will keep on going until, until it reaches this particular part, right. The leftmost element, single element. From here, it comes back and then it will look at the second recursive call, which was divide mid plus 1 comma R. Now, it will go to this particular part, right. And when both of them are completed, both of them are completed, it will come back to the parent array and then it will merge both of them, right. Similarly, when the left part, when the left part of this particular part is executed, so then the right part will be called and when it comes back, the merge function will be called on this array. So, you see all the children will always get executed first and when all the children are combined, first the left children is sorted, the right children is sorted and when both the children are sorted, the current array is sorted. This is how the recursion stack will work. So, I have called my merge function from here. Now, let us see what happens when we have reserved certain values of L, R and bit in the merge function. So, first of all, I create a temporary array. So, this temporary array size would be the size of the left sub array and the size of the right, right sub array, right. So, the size of the total temporary sub array should be r minus l plus 1 because r is the right range and l is the, l, l is the left range, right. So, between these two ranges are all the elements and I have done plus 1 because both of the ranges are included. So, I create a temporary array of size. Now, I create three variables i, j and k. i will start from l because it will be traversing the left sub array. j will start from mid plus 1 because it will be traversing the second sub array and k will start from 0. So, k will be traversing through this temporary array. L will be, I will be traversing to the left sub array and j will be traversing to the second sub array. Now, while i is less than mid plus 1 and j is less than r plus 1. So, mid mid is the limit, upper limit of the left sub array, right. Remember, we call whenever we call the left sub array, we call from r l to mid, where mid is included. So, here I am, uh, since I want to include mid, that is why i is less than mid plus 1. Similarly, I want to include r in the second sub array. So, that is why I have done less than r plus 1, right. So, this is the second condition that I have discussed. Only if the current element or the element A is greater than or equal to 0 and the second element is less than 0. This is the only condition when I need to take the element from the second sub array first. So, what I do? I take the element from the second sub array. You see array of J, right? Since I want to increment both of them, J and K after it, I just do post increment right here only so that it is like neat and clean to look, right? But the thing is, I am using J the element at position j here, right, which is from the second sub array because the pointer j was from the second sub array. Similarly, otherwise in any other conditions, I'll just use the element from the first sub array which is pointed by pointer i, right. This is the part. Now, so you see that I have used an AND condition between both of them. So, if one of them is exhausted, that means all the elements are covered, this while loop will get terminated. So, I again make a while loop separately for them so that if there are some elements remaining in any of the sub arrays, then it will be just directly get appended to the end of the temporary sub array, right. So, it is simple t of uh, if i is less than mid plus 1, the same condition that I use here without checking anything t of k plus plus is equal to array of i plus plus, right. Similarly, for the right sub array, if there are any elements remaining t of k plus plus is equal to array of j plus plus. 
Now I initialize my two variables again k is equal to 0 and i is equal to l. So now k will be pointing to the temporary subarray and i will be pointing to the main subarray. Since all the values in the temporary array t are now sorted, I need to copy it back to the original array. right? So what I do is while k is less than size, size, uh, size is the size of this particular temporary array, I just copy all the values starting from i array of i++ plus plus and is equal to t of k++. Plus plus. So i will be starting from l. Right, because this subarray starts from L and obviously the, the temporary subarray would have started from 0. That is why I have taken 0 and L respectively. This is L. If it looks like 1, this is actually L. Right. So array of i++ plus plus is equal to t of k++. Plus plus. This way I will be able to copy back all the values and this is how you can perform merge sort. So this was all about today's problem of the day. Let me just quickly submit it and show you that this particular solution works and it is a valid solution. So you see that it passes all the test cases and this is absolutely correct and I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments and uh, uh, definitely consider subscribing. I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you are one of them then definitely do it and share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.